Hey everyone, today we are talking about virtual machines and virtualization. I'm joined by Patrick Stone. Hello. Who knows a lot about this stuff. So pretty cool stuff. First off, what is a virtual machine? Uh, so a virtual machine is a software creation that uses your computer's hardware to create a computer inside your computer. Computer reception. Like, yes. So virtual machines are actually really functionally useful and cool. Yeah, absolutely. And virtualization, basically, as you're saying, uh, if you want to do it with Linux or Windows or whatever, you basically you have your host platform and then you install some software normally to do a virtual machine, mm -hmm. like VirtualBox. Uh, Oracle's VirtualBox is good to use. Microsoft has one called Virtual PC. And the one that I think that I probably use more often than not is the VMware VMware Player or right. VMware Workstation Pro. Um, th those are all good softwares, and you can download and try any of them. So uh, trying this is a must. You got to try it. <laughs> so let's let's before going deep on any of these individual things, let's talk about the top level why you would make a virtual machine. So good, good question. Yeah, uh, the the main reason for me is trying operating systems. Right. Uh, People are always asking me about the latest version of Windows or a Windows Server thing. And rather than taking a machine and wiping the hard drive and reinstalling the operating system, I just pop open my virtual machine builder, right. like VMware Workstation or VMware Player, and I say, create new VM. And it just takes up some hard drive space, which is fine. And then I just build the operating system right. on there, which is just the same as installing the OS on an actual machine. and I have a test environment. Alternatively, you could let Windows 10 install itself repeatedly, even though you've told it to stop. <laughs> That's an alternative. And it's not frustrating at all, Microsoft. So uh, yes, that is certainly one use. One of the uses that I have is uh, as sort of a web admin of, of a server, you want to really isolate your upload, your FTP, SCP environment from your main system that you use every day. Because whether or not you're a good, competent computer user, the cross-site scripting means that you can get a virus from pretty much anywhere. Yeah. And uh, if you upload files to your own server, what you want to do is isolate on a virtual machine, do your FTP or SCP through there if you're running Windows, and that will help make sure that there's no sort of uh, like wor wormhole opening that a virus can jump through to get the right. right protocol to your server and infect your server. Yeah, I mean, m most of software can be pretty complicated. And you, you, why create an opportunity if you don't have to? Right. And then on the more user side, there's, of course, downloading of things from the internet. Things. So if you download things from sites that end in orient, <laughs> then you generally, you do want to be a bit careful, obviously. Uh, obviously, we, we can't condone any type of certain type of downloading, but if you are downloading stuff and you want to give yourself an extra buffer. Yeah, it's, it's just like a protection zone, often referred to as like a sandbox, a, right. a, a, a testing area. Uh, one more good use for virtual machines, and this is oftentimes done in the business world, is compatibility. Right. Um, you might have a custom-built software program that a company has that was made for them and it was made when we were using Windows XP and now everybody's moved to Windows 7 and our software that we paid $10,000 to have developed doesn't work on Windows 7. Right. Well, crap. Oh, never mind. We got virtualization. Yeah. So there's lots of uses for virtualization. Yeah, and although you can technically go through like properties and advanced and try and force a compatibility mode. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work, especially with games where you, there's all these weird visual artifacts mm -hmm. and things like that. So if you're running old games that aren't available remade through Steam or good old games or whatever, that's a good use for it. Agreed. Uh, and then going, what's what's your next one? Well, so I'm thinking like, how do we make this thing work, right? Well, what, what is required to make virtual virtualization work? Um, so your CPU's got to support virtualization, right? And one of the one of the little things that can sometimes catch you is that if you go to your motherboard's BIOS and you check on the settings for your CPU, you'll see some virtualization technologies like VTX or VTD. And you need to want to make, you, you want to make sure that those things are turned on, enabled instead of disabled, right. and that's like kind of step one. And then what step two would be just like going into your machine and downloading some type of virtualization software. Right. And then step three is start trying stuff because it's a sandbox. And the most beautiful thing about virtualization is it didn't work. Oh well, delete. Uh huh. 
That's yeah. it. You just allocate some disk space, and if I mean that's that's really the whole point of them, is that it's not something you're attached to. Mm -hmm. So if it goes wrong, or if your vir your uh, system virtual system gets nuked by viruses or whatever, you just delete it and it's gone. You've just done the most uh, thorough virus cleansing possible by deleting its host environment. Yeah, and another cool thing too is that virtual machines are very portable. Like. If you want to take your virtual machine to another location, you just take the virtual machine file, put it on a flash drive, walk, drive, fly, whatever, <laughs> take a train to wherever you're going, and then when you get to your destination, load the same software, the virtual machine player, mm -hmm. on that other computer, take your flash drive, plug it in, oh look, I have mounted the same virtual machine that right. I was using at home. That's a really good point actually, because if you have a development or production environment, you travel a lot, or you've got a company that puts you in front of different computers every week, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a, a good use case for that. Now, one thing to note is virtual machines are more demanding than just a normal host. True. So if you're trying to play games or something on this, really not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, so uh, have this concept in mind. There's a host operating system, and then there's a guest operating system. The virtual machines are the guest operating systems. You allocate resources from your hardware to the guest operating systems. So if your host operating system, let's say it's Windows 7, you're gonna need like two gigs of RAM for Windows 7 and right. you're gonna need a core for your CPU. Let's say you've got a quad core CPU though and you've got 16 gigs of RAM. Right. Right. You can, you can say one core goes to the host OS and two gigs go to the host OS. And then you can allocate another core and another two gigs to another guest OS and another core and another two gigs to another guest right. OS. So you can still do that, but then think about this. If you want to run games like he's talking about, especially AAA titles, those things are going to take up lots of resources. Right. So now all of a sudden this single guest OS is taking up tons of resources if you're trying to run a hardcore game on a virtual machine. Right. So we're there's talking also, about- There's just operating overhead too. Yeah. yeah. And so when we're talking about gaming, we're talking about you know mostly making older games work or maybe making a Linux game work in a Linux environment when you're when you have a Windows based right. PC or vice versa too, if you prefer to run on Linux, this is something mm -hmm. a lot of you have asked about. Is what about Linux gaming? Yeah. Well, if you do really want to help Linux gaming, I guess you know you unfortunately have to sacrifice some compatibility with mm -hmm. Windows and just install Linux. Yeah. But if you get stuck, there's things like Wine in the past has sort of worked to neutralize the environment and get these things working, or you can do the virtual machine approach. Yeah, and this is another great point about virtualization. Virtualization is cross-platform. So whether I'm using VMware or VirtualBox on a Mac or a Linux box or a Windows box uh, to the virtual machine, it all looks the same. Right. Now to the host operating system, it looks very different. But to the virtual machine, it's like, uh, I'm a virtual machine. I got what I got. <laughs> that should be a meme. <laughs> I'm a virtual machine. So a couple very good uses there. Uh, virus isolation is always the easiest one for me to point toward. That's certainly what we use to avoid uh, contamination of environments. If you're testing stuff, maybe you're doing- That's me. Right, testing stuff or you're doing uh, sort of free IT work for friends and you wanna test stuff there, that's a good place to do it too so you don't screw something up that you yep. can't recover. Exactly. Uh, this, what are some other, is there another top level use we can go through? Uh, so th those are really the main things. Uh, when, when you're talking about you know making things compatible, uh, and, and then in addition, like maybe working on things that were older. And right, safe zones, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and so security, test environment, making things compatible, those are really the main things you're gonna right. do with virtual machines. Yeah, so if you want more information, links in the description below, and Patreon link the post video to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. Let us know if you have questions on this stuff, and we'll try and do a version two and get a full series going. But yeah. Pretty cool stuff, very easy to get into. Check out Virtual Machines, VMware, Oracle's. VirtualBox. VirtualBox. Windows Virtual PC. Windows Virtual PC, those are your starting points. Mm -hmm. So we will see you all next time.